there are actually four options. Perhaps some of you in call centers, many people are using Excel. So I guess most of you will be using uh, Excel. Um, but perhaps uh, you see more and more data scientists with, uh, with different backgrounds uh, entering the field of call centers. So perhaps some of you are familiar with Python or R. Um, and what I'm going to say, of course, uh, this web, you can also compute it in any other tooling than Excel. Actually, the second formula that I'm going to show, it's almost uh, word by word. You can use it in a tool like, uh, like R. Uh, but I will be focusing on the, the first three bullets, uh, how to do it uh, in Excel. One way I, I, I actually already showed that was by using, um, uh, by really adding an, an, an additional column. So what I did here, well, um, I could have the, uh, um, and this is the second method, eh, using the absolute uh, error. So what I did here is I, next to my forecast and my actual, I just took the first 10 numbers um, I had to make it a bit smaller and easily presentable. Um, you calculate the absolute errors, you sum them up here and you divide by the sum of the actuals and that's all there's to it. Yes, if you do it this way, you need an additional column in your Excel sheet uh, and, and, and a summation and a division, but, uh, but very simple. Perhaps some of you are familiar with the more advanced features of Excel. And one of the advanced features is an array formula. Yeah. And Actually, you can do this, the same calculation without an additional column by a so-called array formula. And as you can see here, and I, I took the screenshot with the formula, as you can see, there are curly brackets around the formula here. And um, what do these, and actually there's a special type of formula here you also, which allows you to work with arrays in the formulas. As you can see here, I take here the absolute value of the B column and the C column. So this, in this absolute value, instead of just looking at the difference between numbers, I look at the difference between these two, well, columns or two arrays. Yes? And what it does, it makes a new arrays with, with these um, with these differences, and then it does the summation. So some of the functions in Excel work also with, with, with these arrays as, as input. And if you want to use that, what you should do, you should enter them with uh, Control Shift Enter. Yes, there's a, and a special type of formula, and you can recognize them by the, by the curly brackets. So that's an advanced feature of Excel but that, uh, that works uh, nicely and then you don't need this additional column. So if you are familiar with that, that makes uh, the, the formula even, even shorter. And almost word by word, uh, you can type something like that if also in, in, a, in a statistical tool such as R. As it is, uh, I, I think it's completely the same thing except the columns, they will have names of variables, but... Uh, People familiar with, with R will immediately recognize them. Um, and the, the final solution, we really, really want to make things easy uh, for you. What we did is, is this formula that I just showed you. We built this in a very small add-in, not complicated, um, but uh, we, we, we just wrote some VBA code, which also tests if the forecast and the actual are the same length, and you get an error message, so it's really uh, that to avoid that you make uh, any errors, a simple uh, <coughs> add-in, sorry. Um, and that is, um, of course, you have to download this add-in and, uh, and either, uh, well, use it. Uh, hey, it's a uh, ma macro-enabled uh, Excel sheet, so you can either uh, start typing in the Excel sheet or save it as an add-in and then uh, use that add-in all the time. But there is, as you can see, there is a wait function and you enter the forecast, you enter the actuals, and then it gives you the same number. It, it's, uh, it does the calculation that you all already saw in the previous uh, slides. Yes, and you can download it from our website 
if you go here and you go to the tab uh, um, weight calculator, then you find it. It also gives an explanation. Uh, it has a sheet with some example calculations so that you can uh, you can see if you haven't uh, if you still have questions and uh, see how to do. It. Okay, and that is basically where I uh, what I wanted to tell you. Um, I hope that you found this uh, this useful information. Um, as I said, um, there is um, this is the link. You can go to our website and find it, of course. But this is the direct link where you can find this uh, this small add-in. Um, the subject for today was actually suggested by one of our implementation uh, consultants. And um, uh, and we are really open to having really interesting in knowing what type of subject you would uh, like to be discussed and at, at one of our next webinars. So if you have suggestions for uh, other subjects, don't hesitate to send me an email or to put something in the chat or to uh, unmute yourself. Um, you're welcome. Bye bye. I see some people leaving and saying thanks. So uh, uh, if you have to go, have a nice day, have a nice weekend. Um, and if there are any questions that you have um, right now, uh, please feel free to either put them in the chat or to unmute yourself and ask the question, um, uh, whatever you want. So please, we open to uh i'm open to any questions or suggestions or ideas for other webinars Um, your add-ins, are they for use? Um, no, well, the, um, um, there, is, there are a couple of questions. Um, your add-ins, are they for use with Microsoft 365 Accor and they be locally installed? The one I just discussed is a very simple VBA um, application. You can install it locally. Um, we also have other add-ins, uh, like an, uh, we have an Erlang add-in with also uh, our Erlang X with abandonments. Um, you can install it locally, but you need to have access to the uh, uh, Microsoft 365 store. We also have a, a purely an enterprise version, which can be installed locally. But if you just want to have a, a simple license, that, that one goes through the uh, Microsoft 365 store. But if you want to know more, about that, about that specific Erlang add-in, please send us an email and we'll try to help you further. So for years I was used to report in forecasting accuracy. <clears throat> well, that depends on what you call exactly. Uh, Martin de Bruin asked, so for years I was used to reporting forecasting accuracy and not weight. What is the benefit for reporting weight versus reference? That, um, what is the definition of forecasting accuracy? Is that, is that, I mean, uh, the accuracy is that uh, an absolute, uh, is that percentage error, something like that. So to answer that question, I would, uh, would uh, we, we would divide the error by the forecast, not the actuals. That is very somewhat similar. I would say the ground truths are the actuals and not the forecast. Therefore, I'm in favor of dividing by the actuals yes the forecast is something you came up with yourself and um at the ground truth uh, the the reality are the actuals so i think you should divide by the actuals yeah that is the error that you make with respect to the actual and it's not that reality makes an error with respect to your forecast yes so therefore i think you should divide by the uh uh, by the actual, uh, but typically, if your forecast isn't that far off, the difference will, won't be that big. It won't be that big. So, um, uh, but that is a, a small, a small change. There's one small advantage: your forecast will never be zero. So, if you do something like MAPE and you divide by the forecast, 
then you divide this potential error of dividing by zero. So that is an advantage. What sometimes people do is they divide not by the actual, not by the forecast, but half times the actual plus half times the uh, the, the forecast. They to de avoid this dividing by zero, but as I argued, uh, the weight already uh, does that. Okay, I hope that was clear. Okay, people who are leaving, um, uh, thanks for joining. Um, you're welcome. Thank you for attending. Have a great weekend. Okay, again, if you have any suggestions for other um, subjects, don't hesitate to send me or one of my colleagues an, an email. Thanks to everybody. Good seeing you. I don't see any questions anymore, so I want to thank you all again for attending. Uh, have a good weekend. Send me any suggestion for other subjects and hope to see you uh, next time at another webinar or any other occasion. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend.